Hey guys, Dan here with the Every Dad Workshop. Uh, today I've got my son's Axial X SCX24 deadbolt. And if you take a look at this guy, you can see we've got a whole bunch of aftermarket parts on here. Uh, we've got the metal rods, some brass weights in a number of places, uh, including the differential covers. I've got some so big swamper tires and some aftermarket wheels and all of that goes together to make this this truck a fantastic climber um, he can climb over anything with this thing it, it's amazing uh, you can climb really steep angles uh, maintain great contact with the ground it's fantastic however with all of that extra weight uh, we have recently burned out the stock 88 turn motor so today, we're going to replace that motor with an aftermarket hot racing 66 turn motor. And uh, you'll also notice here, I have uh, a, a motor plate that's just a little bit different than the stock. Uh, and that's necessary for putting in the, installing this motor. So I'm going to walk you through that today. Um, before we start, I'll show you some of the tools that I show up to a job like this with. I always have a bunch of tools around. Um, here's some of the stuff that you'd want to have on your tool bench. Um, I always have uh, lots of Allen keys, right? All these, all these nuts and bolts are hex and I've got all my Allen keys. You can see I have them all color coded. Uh, it's kind of my own little color code. Maybe I'll do a video on that sometime, but basically what's happening there is if I assume that I'm always going to use socket head bolts, then if you grab the same color, so for instance, this is M3, and in my mind, green sounds like three. So the green will fit the socket head bolt and the nut for an M3 pair. So that's just a little thing I do. Uh, maybe that'd be helpful for you. Uh, I bought, a while ago, I bought some little rolls of tape and I just label all of my Allen keys with, with that little code. And that's been really, really useful. Um, I also always have my, my full Weeha kit. This is like a master technician bits kit. And this thing is fantastic. If you can get into all kinds of tight spots and this thing will get you out. And I just recently picked up this little Weehawk set. So especially for the little axial trucks, there's lots of little tiny nuts and bolts in there. Um, this little tiny Weehaw kit, uh, not only does it have the nice small diameter stuff, well, let's see if I can get that in focus. Does have the nice small diameter tools, but they're short in length as well. So it helps you get into tight spots. And then if you're gonna be working on these little tiny bolts, you're definitely gonna to wanna to have spares sitting around. Um, this is a repurposed mince tin, and I've got a little 3D printed separator in there. And that's a great way to use an Altoids box. Um, somewhere around here, here we go. Definitely recommend putting a rubber band on that guy. Uh, then all sorts of little pliers. Again, uh, you know, most, most guys' garage, you'll have a big pair of pliers like this, but for these axial trucks and a lot of the other 3D printing and things that I do, these little Zuron uh, needle nose are fantastic and then associated cutters. Uh, but today, all the tools we're going to need are these three guys here. So this is a 0.05 inch driver. This is a four, four millimeter nut driver. And a pair of diagonal cutters. I'll explain what we need those for in a little bit. All right, so let's get into it. So here's the truck. Uh, before we start putting things on, we're going to have to open the truck up. 
So take off the body clips. Oh yeah, also I like to store stuff. 3D printed a bunch of these little trays. Just nice to keep things separate. And I don't know, I guess everybody can figure out their own method, but I generally just go kind of top left to right and start filling up the tray as I'm taking things off. And then as I start putting things back on, hopefully you start bottom right and work your way up to the top left. Um, I'm gonna take the, the body off of this truck. We're gonna be messing around in this section in here. So uh, it's just a little bit easier to take off the body. Body's off, set that aside, looking cool. All right, next thing we're gonna wanna do is take off the battery tray, because we're gonna have to get in here to the motor and the transmission, and we're gonna have to take this battery tray out. And I guess while, while we're here, we'll take a look at the way the battery tray is installed. There are four bolts that hold it in place with these four legs, and if we observe, the length of our new motor is substantially longer than our old motor, it's going to interfere with that leg right there. So we've got our, our crazy diagonal cutters. We're gonna go after that guy in a couple minutes. All right, so let's take this off. bigger trucks, I sometimes use a powered screwdriver at least to remove the bolts, but on these really little tiny, tiny bolts, I just think there's too much risk in stripping something out. So you got to be really careful uh, and, I don't know, get yourself a nice driver. These, some of these drivers have a, a little bushing or just a spinning section on the back. Get some little little grippies on here, makes it really easy to spin pretty quickly. All right, so we've got our battery tray off. Now it's time to remove the transmission and motor. Um, there's three bolts, and uh, you're gonna have to turn this upside down to get two of the bolts off. So I think I'm gonna Leave this one in place so it doesn't just drop out when I do those two bolts. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna do these bottom two bolts first. the transmission and motor. Okay. Uh, before we pull this out, we'll unplug the motor from the speed controller. Uh, you can see it says MOT for motor there, so it'll be easy for us to figure out where to put it back. All right, now, 
just observe how the motor connects to the drive shafts or the through the transmission connects to the drive shafts um, as you lift these up and out you'll see that they those little splines just release uh, it's not too hard to get it back in but just as you're taking it out it's nice to observe how it was assembled uh, so that you can more easily get it back together okay so now we're going to set the truck aside and we're going to be working on this assembly here and the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take this cover off. Um, actually, yeah, we're going to take the cover off. Oops, sorry. Let's get in here. As you're taking bolts out, there's a temptation to say, oh, this is all in the same step. Let's put them all in the same little, little uh, part of our tray. But you'll see here that these are definitely different lengths. So let's keep those separate. Those two short guys together and this long separate. All right, so now this cover comes off and you can see what's on the inside here. So you've got the little pinion that's attached to the motor and our new motor has its own little pinion. So when we take this off, we'll just kind of take it all off as an assembly and what we can see is that in order to get access to the motor bolts, we're gonna to have to remove this spur gear. But before we can remove the spur gear, we're gonna to have to remove this drive shaft. So let's turn the drive shaft around so that we can get access to the little set screw. We want to loosen that up enough to get it out. Maybe it has to come all the way up. Now we're going to take that off and we're going to put these parts in with their associated hardware. All right. Now you'll notice that I've been able to do most of this disassembly so far with this 0 0.05 inch um, driver. I'm going to put this aside for just a minute. And we're going to bring in our four millimeter to take this nut off. All right, so that's backing off nicely. Right, so now we're gonna remove, really we're gonna remove this whole plate.
because we've got to put a new plate on. So it doesn't really make any sense to remove this motor from this plate if we can take it all off at once. So let's give that a shot. All right, back to our driver. Now, as we're taking the bolts out of the rest of the transmission, if I remember correctly, we've got to be careful not to let the transmission fall apart because some of these longer bolts are sandwiching a number of parts. We don't want everything to fall apart. We just want to be taking this plate off. There we go. It's a little tricky. Um, so you can see I put my thumb. Let's make it this to focus for you. Put my thumb on this little piece. It almost looks like it's protecting that shaft to hold the transmission together because we've removed all these bolts that were sandwiching it with the motor plate. So just did that to hold this all together. Set that down for a second, and then I'll open up this motor plate and we'll start assembling. Okay, here's our motor plate, and we can compare it to the plate that was in there before. And you can see that this plate just has a couple extra positions to attach motor to. So the stock motor is top left, lower right, and this motor we're going to be top right, lower left. So let's observe that and remember it and start putting everything back together before it all falls apart. Now remember, you're putting very small 1.4 millimeter screws, bolts, into plastic. So don't overdo it with the torque. You can strip these out pretty easily. It's another nice thing my little tape labeling method does is it gives you another place to grip on the shaft just makes it a little bit nicer to drive these in but you may have a different method So, next thing we're going to do is install our motor. So here's our nice new motor. And remember we said we're going to be top right, lower left. And it looks like, whoops, looks like we actually should have taken 
these little bolts off because this guy didn't come with its own bolts. So that's fine. We'll take these bolts out and we'll use them to attach our motor. Ooh, those are a different size. So let's see what size they are. Let's go to our little wee hot kit here. I bet that it's one of these. I bet it's this 1.5. There we go. 1.5 millimeter teeny wee hot kit for the win. This thing's great. Let's get lined up. And before we tighten this, I'm just going to put these in so they just barely touch. Because we're, you can see there's a little bit of play. In these, these are more like slots than they are holes. So that's giving us the ability to adjust the gear mesh. So we got to get our spur gear in there. So we got, yeah, give ourselves a, the ability to wiggle this guy around until we get everything put back together and we can check our gear mesh. All right, so now we're ready to put this spur back on. What you'll observe is this output shaft has some flats that mesh. It's tough to see that black, but you can see it on the white part. There's some flat sides. You're just gonna get them lined up. And drop it right on there. Feel. Yeah, see if it's, the motor's way down here, it almost feels like it wants to skip off the end of those teeth. It's not really meshed all that well. Um, I'll tell you what, before we finish doing that, we'll put our nut back on. And this is another place where you, you're threading a nut onto an interrupted cut thread on that output shaft. You want to be very careful applying torque. Some of these drivers, you've got this great big knurled handle. Don't grab hold with your whole fist and tighten that thing down because you'll break something. So we're going to just bring it down to it's pretty much finger tight. We want to make sure that this spins freely because if you tighten that down too much, you're kind of clamping that spur gear and, and the, you know, the rest of the drivetrain and that just creates undue load on your motor. So don't really overdo it there. Um, it's, not, it's not really wobbling that much, but I'm afraid I don't want to clamp it too hard. So that seems like it's, that seems like it's spinning nicely. We'll just leave it like that. Okay, now, there's a little bit of judgment here, but, yeah, when, oh, you can see, if I get it down too far, too far away, I can just spin that spur. That's what I was talking about, where there's a lot of adjustability in there, and it's up to you to feel where that mesh is right. Oh, darn. So now that I'm looking at this, you can see that spur gear is blocking my ability to tighten one of those bolts. I'm gonna pop it off quick. It's 
all part of the process. So what we learned from experimenting is we want to be up a little higher. Oops. So our 1.5, 1.5 millimeter driver on these motor nuts, motor bolts, sorry. that one over here. Drop the spur, be skewer, spur gear back on. Oh yeah, it feels good. I'm not cross threading and then once again finger tight all right feels good okay now before we close her back up we're gonna put our Drive shaft back on. So this is a D-shaped shaft going into a D-shaped hole. So we'll line up the flat. Get down there. Get our bolt back in. And you'll see as we tighten the bolt, it just starts to peek out over here. Once again, don't overdo it with the torque. And you can see how my little method for loading from top left to lower right and then going back just eliminates all the drama in figuring out, like, oh, we're. Where is that bolt, or is this the right one? It's worked, worked out nicely. All right, let's put this cover back on. Okay, snap down nicely. Okay. Looks like it might have. Looks like I should have used this bolt. This is the longer bolt that holds the transmission assembly together over here. So it looks like I need to modify my system a little bit in order to account for multiple bolt lengths at the same stage. And actually, what I should have done is I should have put those two short ones in with this cover because this long bolt didn't actually go through the cover. 
All right, lesson learned. Maybe you guys can do that a little more gracefully than I did. Yeah, okay, still feels good. Okay, so we've got our motor and transmission all put back together ready to get installed back into the truck. Move some of this stuff out of the way. Bring the truck over. Now, what we gotta do is we gotta find these little splines down here. You can see it on my finger. Get that ready to get lined up. Boom. And then this one. A little bit tricky. Okay. All right. We're on both. Sweet. Okay. So now we're going to do the opposite of what I did taking this out. And we're going to do the top first. Let's top one bolt first so that nothing moves when I flip the truck over. There we go. All right, now we're ready to put our battery tray back on. But as I explained before, and actually, before we do that, let's make sure that the motor works. So I'm gonna pull a battery out of another truck that I know it's charged up. battery part of the controller all right let's hook the motor up let's hook the battery up see that it works yeah all right yeah we'd feel silly if we got that battery tray back on and motor didn't work so motor works thank you hot racing okay so now we're gonna put this battery tray back on and you can see if I tried to get down to get this bolt on this lined on this hole motors in the way so we're going to put on our safety glasses and make sure we got this in the right orientation we do we're gonna snip this right off Get it up as flush as we can. Try not to cut our Velcro. Boom. 
Suddenly it fits. All right, let's get this guy reinstalled. Okay. All right. Now, do a little bit of cable management here. Maybe we'll want to tape that up or something. Maybe we'll. back in. Okay. Now, got to put the body back on. So we'll snap this hinge back in place. clips back in. What was fighting me there? Oh, is this guy's in the way. There we go. Okay. Power on. Just check it out again. Boom, just like that, I've got a happy little guy who's got his truck back. All right, there it is. Just swapped the motor. Didn't take that long. Uh, should, be, should be a little bit better sized for this weight of truck and uh, hoping for some great performance out of this. I'll report back on how this new motor does but uh, don't be scared to do this kind of upgrade yourself. Uh, follow along and uh, send me some comments if you guys saw anything that I did I could have done easier. Um, and you know, let me know if you do this to your own rig. All right, get after it. Have fun. Bye.